The New York Knicks recently made a huge splash in acquiring OG Ananobi and it is paying off. While I understand some criticism of the trade, it was one I always really understood from both sides. I'll dive into more of my thoughts on the trade in a moment, but something is clearly working as the Knicks are currently on a four game win streak since OG entered the lineup, including wins over the Minnesota Timberwolves and Philadelphia 76ers. The fourth seeded Knicks have looked dominant and they're only going to get better. Today I'm going to be diving into the Knicks season so far, their recent move and where they should go from here. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton. Small NBA YouTuber trying to grow. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. While I'm obviously going to discuss the likes of Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, I'm going to start with the man of the hour, OG Ananobi, and why I always like the move. The Knicks weren't paying IQ and couldn't maximize him with Brunson, and in all honesty, even if OG were to leave, I'd rather $26 million in cap relief than RJ Barrett. OG obviously isn't leaving, but this emphasizes how much I like this deal. I can understand how someone would think the sum of the talent of both Quickly and RJ exceeds that of OG, but given circumstances, I think it was a good deal for both sides, and a great one for the Knicks. I personally think a large part of how this Knicks team looks is not only due to the presence of OG, but also the removal of RJ. Obviously RJ has some level of talent, but I really don't like him on this team or on a contender in general, honestly. I've just never really been much of a fan of his game, and while I think he could develop some more in Toronto, I think it's clear he's not who we thought he could be in high school and college. But while getting off a negative contract and someone you couldn't maximize or pay is great, Getting one of the hottest names in the league who wants to be in New York and is a seamless fit anywhere is even better. While I can understand that people would rather the Knicks waited until free agency, this makes things sure while also getting off of a negative deal. You secure your likely number one free agent target in exchange for little value to your situation. While OG hasn't had the offensive role he's desired quite yet, his impact goes far beyond the stat sheet. With OG, you get someone who can guard the other team's best guard or wing while also giving you 15 or so a night on great three-point shooting. He's a guy who spaces the floor well and can give you something, but won't get in the way of your best scores like uh, some people we know. The loss of Mitchell Robinson was crushing for the Knicks, especially defensively, but the addition of OG has returned hope for this Knicks season. The Knicks team defense has increased exponentially since adding OG. In the 13 games before the trade, the Knicks were allowing above 126 points a night, and since getting OG, that is all the way down to just shy of 101. This kind of impact is rarely seen from non-bigs, and when Mitch returns next season, this will be a top, top tier defense. But even though the addition of OG and the subtraction of RJ helped the Knicks, he's obviously not the one primarily putting the ball in the basket. Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle are both having great seasons and funnily enough are pretty similar on this four game win streak since adding OG. Both guys have three outstanding games and one awful game in the last four. Brunson averaged 31, three and eight on 57, 46, 100 in the past three games against the Bulls, Sixers and Wizards, but had 16, four and 14 on five of 23 from the field and one of nine from three against the Wolves. Julius Randle averaged 38, 7, and 3 on 57, 38, 76 in three of the last four games against the Wolves, Bulls, and Wizards, but had 8, 7, and 5 on 1 of 11 from the field and 0 of 3 from 3 against the Sixers. Obviously, both of these guys are phenomenal players, shown by three games of evidence, but I thought this was kind of funny. Despite your occasional stinker, however, Brunson and Randle have both been on absolute heaters over the past 15 games. I'm going to start off with Brunson as the Villanova legend is definitely one of my favorite players. First off, it has been absolutely unreal to see Brunson blossom into a true star. As we all know, he was one of the greatest college players of all time, but basically had negative hype as a prospect. We saw him start to blossom in Dallas, and ever since his arrival in New York, he has been nothing short of outstanding. Jalen is currently averaging 26, 4, and 6 on the season on solid efficiency and has really turned it up as of late. Over his last 15 games, Brunson is averaging 28, 4, and 8 on 48, 43, 85, including his unreal 50-point outing in Phoenix and 38-point game in a Christmas win over Milwaukee. While I love Jalen Brunson's game the way it was, he has implemented the three-pointer significantly more this year than ever before, and that is not only great but somewhat necessary in the high-paced game we see today. Today. But Brunson has not only shot the three more, but it's also shooting at a 43.5% clip, which is not only the best of his career by a decent margin, but also third in the NBA among players taking six or more threes a night. While not as drastic, 
due to Brunson being a better shooter in the first place. Seeing guards like De'Aaron Fox and Brunson add the three with great volume and efficiency gives me entire new outlooks for their games. Brunson, since he started playing 30 plus minutes two or so years ago, was a 40% on four attempts guy, which is nothing short of outstanding, but this year Jalen Brunson is shooting 43.5% from deep on just over 6.5 attempts a night. With how lethal Brunson's in-between mid-range and finishing game is, him being this effective from deep makes him nearly unguardable. Brunson is elite, and while Julius Randle had a bit of a slow start to the season, he has picked it up recently in a big way. In his past 15 games, Julius Randle is averaging 28-9-4 and on 53-25-83 splits. While the three-point shooting has been pretty bad, you'd have to think it can't stay that way forever. Julius really only has one year of great three-point shooting, but prior to this year, he is a career 33.5% or so shooter. Should he progress to the mean, Randall should be in line for another 25-9-4 season. While I know his playoff numbers have been lackluster, I still feel like Randall gets severely underappreciated despite playing in the largest media market. I get why some don't love Randall, but he has been a pretty good player during his time in New York, and I think I'd rather have him than what you could potentially get for him in the three years left on his deal. As for the rest of the Knicks roster, the Nova fan in me absolutely loves seeing Brunson, DiVincenzo, and Hart all out there and performing. Dante DiVincenzo may be having one of the most underrated seasons right now. He is putting up 11-3-2 in 21 minutes a night on great efficiency, including a whopping 44.2% from deep. Isaiah Hardenstein is also a solid backup big that is doing at least fine in regards to filling the gap left by Mitchell Robinson. While I like the other pieces the Knicks have, it's clear that despite the big moves that something is missing. While you weren't going to pay him or maximize his talent, losing the scoring of an Emmanuel quickly off the bench is obviously tough right now. I think Dante DiVincenzo in an increased role could probably get his 11 to 15 while still being efficient, but I still think the Knicks should make another splash. The Knicks have a plethora of draft assets and a near $19 million contract to trade in Evan Fournier. I have a few ideas in mind, so let's get into it. The first one I'm going to throw out there is 100% a Nova fan fantasy that definitely won't happen, but let me be. The deal I have in mind would send Mikhail Bridges across town for Evan Fournier and three first round picks. I think there is a world where Mikhail Bridges could be had at the deadline, and I think there is a reason for the Knicks to maybe even trade four firsts. Mikhail now knows what it's like to be a role player and a star player, and this combined with his chemistry with his former Villanova teammates would make this a seamless fit. Mikhail is also similar to OG in some respects as a 3 and D player who can give you some more offensively and space the floor extremely well. I can understand fear of redundancy with OG, but this is honestly good redundancy if that makes sense. Mikhail is also more developed as a scorer and creator than OG, and having him as your third scorer behind Brunson and Randall would be lethal. Now for the last part that would make him and one other guy worth four first potentially, his contract. Mikhail Bridges is a guy who would command 40 to 45 million on the open market that is under contract for this year and the two following at no more than 25 million dollars a year. This would allow the Knicks more flexibility this and next offseason while adding an all-star talent. The next guy, who appears to certainly be available, who I think could also fit pretty much anywhere, is Lori Markkinen. He has developed into an elite player after becoming somewhat of an afterthought in Chicago, and like Mikhail, his contract is outstanding. While he's under contract for one year less than Mikhail, his $17 to $18 million figure this and next season would allow for great flexibility in this offseason for the Knicks. Laurie is a 7-footer who isn't the worst defender in the world who is also a game-changing floor spacer. Since arriving in Utah, Laurie is shooting 38.7% from deep on just shy of 8 attempts a game with averages of 25, 9, and 2. Laurie is also only 26 years old and could be the Knicks' best option with it looking unlikely any superstar player will become available soon. The final guy I'll talk about for the Knicks to potentially target is DeJounte Murray. While I understand objection to this, he has somewhat reinvented his game playing next to Trey Young and is now shooting north of 38% from deep. His contract is also not awful as it averages out to around $25 million a year. While his defense has declined, he could be rejuvenated under Tibbs and had at a somewhat low cost. I can understand why people wouldn't want him, but he could be a secondary ball handler and scorer while being a decent defender and playmaker. There are other smaller trade targets like an Alex Caruso that I think could elevate this team on both ends, but with the amount of teams that should be in on Caruso, you can never be too sure about one team that he could go to. With Hartenstein being fine, I don't think there's any need to trade value for a big. Maybe a backup like Drummond, but I don't see anyone that would be worth giving up assets for with having Mitch on the roster for next year. With teams like Boston, I'm not exactly sure what this Knicks team can do right now, 
but they are definitely moving in the right direction. They are building a culture that can finally attract a superstar free agent to the Garden and have a bona fide star in Jalen Brunson. Knicks basketball should officially be back for the long haul, and I think that's always great for the league. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub to the channel, hit that noti bell. I would really, really appreciate it. Let me know down below what you guys think about the OG trade, what you guys think the Knicks should do from here, how far you think this Knicks team could go. Again, you know, I, I think they could maybe upset a, a Philly or a Milwaukee. I can't pick anyone to beat Boston. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I really just can't pick anyone to beat that Boston team. That team is just unreal. But again, man, the Knicks are trending in a great, great direction. And, you know, it should be fun. I love watching Jalen Brunson play basketball, man. Just once again, like, you know, just a Nova fan in me. It, it's just been so great seeing him ascend and, you know, doing it in the garden. You know, I, I it, it, it's been great. It's been great, man. But that's going to wrap this one up for real. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.